What is going on buddy, Zach RC here, welcome back to the channel and welcome along to episode number 3 of the F123, my team crew are today for the Australian Grand Prix, round number 3 of the championship, guys if you did miss the last episode, the first two episodes uploaded the last two days, make sure to go check those out before you see this one, there'll be a card in the top right hand corner of your screen, now to get to the playlist, to get yourself caught up on the first two episodes before we go into this one, right so quick, um, do a quick, quick department event before we get underway in terms of cars through time. Attending an event or supporting a charity that we're with. So regarding our teammate Marcus Armstrong, I'm going to choose to just choose to decline this one because we've committed to charity and we make a donation as well. So we'll get team acclaim for that, which is crucial. Decision, we can lose, we, we can sacrifice well. a bit of cash Thanks. for now. And in terms of that, we've now thanks for that claim, we've now reached a claim level five. So we'll be able to get our first um, our first secondary sponsor in on the car. So just little bonuses that run out over to, over a short period of time compared to the ones that we have for the year with Xenon Dynamics. So in terms of sponsor, we're, we're going to choose u -Turp here. The weekly goal is to complete a race with no DNFs in the team. So as long as both cars make to the line, then we're all good and we get the money for that. So we'll sign u -Turp and we'll then put them on the car in some in other places here on the front wing there. Well, thanks to the, the white against the, uh, the some of the light blue into place, it's difficult to see it unless it's kind of small in a lot of parts. But it looks okay to me. I like it. I like the fact we're adding more sponsors on the car. And eventually, we'll get a few more and replace the, replace the Xeno Dynamics one. has got a lot of sponsors on the car right now. And we've got enough money as well to make an upgrade to one of our facilities. So, crucially, it was a, a toss-up between aero and chassis. But I went with chassis in the end. And we're going to upgrade our quality control, which will reduce our chance of failure for new part development by 10%. So that's plus cost just over a million to be done. So we've got 446k still in the bank. So we'll look forward to getting that underway and get our chassis into our chassis department into spec one because we've got those upgrades coming in as well. So we're gonna advance time here, getting closer towards the start of the Grand Prix itself. Three upgrades coming through, and there is your quality control spec one upgrade really coming in as well. And the chassis upgrade is completed. Durability team. department event. This is a uh, the conclusion to what we did again at the start of the last episode. So we'll have a look here as just to what happened in the result of that. The durability department understood and are dedicated to finishing by the deadline, which reduces the morale by 10%. So, not great. It's good we've already got that upgrade in, but we have to avoid making upgrades for durability for the moment thanks to the low morale. Don't want to risk failing that in that respect. And of course, our quality control is now there in headquarters. That's all good. So, we'll look into making some upgrades here. We'll make a chassis upgrade thanks to God. Got our new quality control that's in. So, make a chassis upgrade there and an aero upgrade, a minor aero upgrade. So, we'll have a look at those two now. Our first major upgrade coming through on the chassis and a minor upgrade on the aero that'll be in on the Saturday of the 15th of April, so the way through next month. So I'm going to advance time now to the Grand Prix. Looking forward to Australia. There's a couple of good races there on F122. Looking forward to try and continue that. I haven't direct raced it with a back marker team too much because we raced it with Williams in the last game. Um, we've got a bit of money, a bit of price for R&D, so we're going to use this very discounted powertrain upgrade to our advantage. Nothing left. We haven't got enough to go for any durability. No discounts there. So now we've got a powertrain upgrade and minor one coming through, so that'll help us closer to Alfa Romeo and Haas. So. Without further ado, then, we're going to jump right into the race weekend and see what it's got to offer for us. Let's do this. So I was doing quick practice then. We took away a decent number of resource points. It brings us up to 1.5k as of right now. We'll keep that going towards the race itself. And of course, we've got our claim as well. Up to driver claim level 3. Marcus is up there at level 7 already. So he's, he's quite away in front of us to try and close him down by the end of the season. And we're at level 5. Team Acclaim and nearing level 6. So moving into qualifying now for the race itself. We got out of Q1 last time in Saudi Arabia. So the aim here was to try and, be, to try and repeat that. But this is a vastly different circuit. It's, the, it's still technically a street course. So looking forward to seeing what's got to well for us. But it's always been treated more like a real racetrack. So it's come off the last corner. The start of our first flying lap in Q1. The aim here has to say to get out of this first qualifying session into Q2. In these dry conditions, we're looking at wet conditions of the race here. So we don't get a lot of running in in terms of what we'll be driving in terms of race conditions. So we'll just see what this lap has to offer, making our way down towards turn number four and out of the last corner to complete that first lap and we'll see where we stack up on the board and coming towards the line here. The first lap set is a 1 minute 21.5 that puts us P8 that's behind Logan Sargent. The Williams car sort of benchmark for us to be trying to hit early on in the season. So we accelerate time here and we're dead last, which is the same situation we faced in Bahrain. So let's try and close it down in terms of how quick, of how, how long we can wait before we set a lap time here. So we'll set it as the checkered flag comes to an end. It brings about the end of the first session. Still dead last here. And Armstrong is on the back row with us. It's not good right now for us. And you guys, it's P18. We're going to try and match him. Eight tenths up on our previous effort as we charge towards the line. Where will that put us? Across the line we come. Hopefully, try and beat, us, try and beat our team. But of course, it's only P21 in the end. So still starting in the back row. And we are out of Q1. Both cards out in Q1 for the second time. So we join Hulkenberg, Snowdar, Armstrong, De Vries, and Sargent in the bottom six for qualifying. Which is to be expected, it's quite a different circuit, but I'm looking forward to seeing if we can make up a few places in the wet weather. So without further ado then, let's jump into the Grand Prix itself.
Welcome to Melbourne and welcome to the Australian sun. We're still getting used to some track revisions here, but the core hasn't changed. This is a beloved classic of the F1 calendar and it's time for the Australian Grand Prix. We're a stone's throw from the enormous Port Phillip Bay for today's race at the 3.28 mile Albert Park circuit. It's a bumpy racing surface here and the 14 corners could prove especially difficult in the wet conditions. So watch out for a safety car at some point during this Grand Prix. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Perez, Russell, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Gasly, Bottas, Stroll, Magnussen, Albon, Joe, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Armstrong, Cohen, Sargent, Cohen. And now it's time to head down to the track. It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today. Although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. And Natalie Pinkham, good to have you with us here today. Your thoughts? Well, first and foremost, I'm looking forward to staying dry here in the commentary box. Thank goodness. The rain, though, does add an extra level of spice, doesn't it? Well, the heavens have well and truly opened ahead of the third round of the Formula 1 World Championship. We start from P20 on the grid from Nick De Vries with a grid penalty from what I've got a bad component change. Not entirely sure. In terms of strategy here, looking at uh, potentially taking a gamble those extra thousands of a second were tempting, but I don't want to risk it too much. So we'll pit on lap number 13 and we'll see if that gets us towards the end of the Grand Prix. Of course, we'll see. We make, sorry, we'll make, make a last minute change to pit to lap 15 because we always try and pit in a lap after everyone else might help us in some cases. So it has in the past on previous games, so I try and take a risk here and see what happens. It may have been worth actually making that change back, but we'll, we've made the change now and we'll see where it makes it, where it leads us out. So for the formation lap here, we're starting on the 10th row ourselves and Armstrong as we come off the grid here and making our way out onto the formation lap. We have yet to drive this track and this, 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 on this game in wet weather, so this could be a struggle for us. I'm hoping it won't be. You can see just how detailed the rain is on this one. The graphics have been, have been up dramatically and it definitely shows compared to the last few games in particular. So making our way through now, through turn two, and hopefully we can try and beat Armstrong again to bring ourselves close to the point. We came close last to Mountain Jeddah. We really came up the order and we were almost a few places out of the points playing positions, but just didn't reach in the end. Got to line the car up as we do, trying to try and get in front of Armstrong, cover him off and on the main straight. We get a bit too close there. And just like that, we've been reset our starting position for the first time for failing to park it in the right place. But regardless, we'll push on here. No more talking time for action. Five red lights for the Australian Grand Prix in the wet. Round number three of the championship. And it's lights out, foot to the floor. Go, go, go. Poor getaway for Sargent. Better one for Mick DeVries. We start us dead last. Armstrong comes across us. Hulkenberg gets really bogged down here. Going to look all the way back to the outside if we can for turn one. Get in front of Armstrong. Being backed up behind Snowder. Trying to go on his outside through this first right hand. A bit of contact there. Tapped his wheel on the interim through turn number two. Side by side. Use our battery. Try and pull in front of him. We will pull in front of him. Up into P17 here. We're going to try and close down Piastri and on. Go for that dive into turn number three. And we very neat. And we, we did we did tap Piastri, unfortunately. And at the inside of Joe as well. You saw the guy throw a hand up in frustration in the cockpit. Around the outside of Joe in the upper middle. Run a bit too wide there. Through turn number four. And Joe goes charging back to the Brugal. There's five places gained so far. Starting from P20 and out to P15. So try and make some moves here over the rain that's opening lap. Coming towards the end of that first lap of the Grand Prix. Still closing on Joe, trying to make a move with an Ocon behind us and a dive right to the inside of the Alfa Romeo, going into that penultimate corner and we'll come away with P14. So Ocon goes to try and counter on Joe as well. So he goes, goes to go side by side to the last corner. Just come through to complete a very slow first lap of this race. Verstappen in the lead up front and we take, working on chasing down Alexander Albon. We had a good step with last time out in Saudi Arabia as well. So pushing on, midway through lap two, yellow flag in front. Not quite sure what that is. It looks like one of the rebels again. The hate seat it happens been again after one of the last time out in Saudi Arabia, the double retirement. And Verstappen, the reigning world champion, out again. You wouldn't know it. He completely destroyed the field of the first race in Bahrain. He was out in Saudi Arabia and he's out again here in Australia in the virtual safety car. He's deployed for the first time on lap number two, this Australian Grand Prix. So very unfortunate two retirements in three for Max Verstappen whose title defense is off to a torrid start here. We'll have to take a look just at what happened to him. You can't really tell what smoke or spray 
in weather this harsh on the racetrack, but he's slowing up massively. You see the Ferrari coming through there to claim the top spot away, and he pulls the car over to, to the right hand side of the track, onto the grass, and he's out of it, just like that. So, terrible luck for the Dutchman there. And we'll, up, we'll up bring us to another position here. But the virtual safety car comes to an end, the end of number two. And we're, we're, we're a bit too up on the, a bit too down on the Delta, so we, we've lost a lot of time to Albon there. It's about a true second back of the stands. And Joe is now right by a for some through the last corner here to complete what has always been a very slow second lap of this Grand Prix. Make our way off that final corner now, using our batteries to try and get away as best we can from the Alpha Romeo and the Alpine running behind. But Stappen's car is still sitting there in okay, so sector number two, and one, hopefully we get a clear. But the virtual safety car is out again. A second virtual safety car, but I'm not even sure it's four. But Stappen's now despawned, so I'm not even sure what they've called that for. It might be a game bug, which is unfortunate to get those get fixed in that coming patch, with the day one patch, when that drops tomorrow, hopefully. But the virtual safety car out once again, but it, of course, it comes back in, ending here. Midway through that three, around the same spot with Verstappen did with the car. He's now, but now back on the way, we've lost a bit more time to Albon here, two seconds behind him, using our battery again to try and pull away from Joe. He might just try and get around us, going towards that, le that left hander, going into the chicane, but I don't think he's person to go for it, so I think we're safe for the time being. Ocon slightly further back there in P15, we've gone wide there into the gravel, going towards the penultimate corner of the circuit, and Joe now trying us to go to the inside. We've gone a bit too deep, they were onto the grass, and Joe charges through. Ocon takes a little bonus as well, as two places lost in the double alley for us there. So now down to P15, we've got Oscar Piastri on his home race, now breathing down our necks as he charges down the main straight and onto lap number four of this Grand Prix. We're try and close on Joe and Ocon as best we can here, try and keep with them over the next couple of laps or so, try and force a way back past, missing the curve completely in turn one and all out of shape in two. So Piastri could try and get a run as we get close enough. I think he's not going to get close enough. We're going to use our battery to try and pull away. So he push further on now, tracing down Joe for that position, trying to get one of them back. Really closing with the help with the use of the battery. We're going to try and look to the outside if we can get enough to run. We're not going to try it on the outside. We're going to go to the inside instead for the chicane. We're going to go very late on the brakes and we're making our way through and up back up into P number 14 as we make our way off the chicane and now start chasing down the Frenchman Esteban Ocon with Snowden now eating spray in our wake and Piastri will try and threaten him as well going towards this next right hander. So we're in front of Joe. We'll start chasing down Ocon. On to lap number nine now. Magnussen's now the car we're chasing, but he's seven seconds up the road. So this ZLC Motorsport car isn't that quick in the wet by the looks of things. Well, the driver definitely can help either. I'm not, oh, not the best in the wet myself. Yellow flag okay, behind clear. us. Not quite sure that is. Piastri is now at well, with Sonoda, and Joe has fallen dramatically down the order. So I only assume it's Gonyu Joe who has had some kind of problem here. We might have to find out. Let's have a look at the replay here. He's going side by side with Oscar Piastri on the run towards the left hand. You see Armstrong back there behind defending from Nico Hulkenberg and there's a contact between the two of them. I think Joe managed to go a bit too deep and maybe went in just to hit, hit a Piastri there. So he's now around, he's stuck in the gravel trap, he's not stuck per se, but it'll take a bit of while for to get back out as you see him really pushing the car, fully red line the throttle to get him to the gravel and now back in the race once again. So let's see if he can try and recover from that position. We need a safety car or something like that to really have a chance at taking any more places towards the end of this race. So on to lap number 10 now, we've got Yuki Snow sitting there right behind us Gone into the penultimate corner, but a bit too deep, missed the curb there. Snowden trying to take advantage on the outside here. Look at him trying to make a move on us, going through this last corner. Moves back into line, but I dare see Matt trying to go on the attack on the main straight. We're using our battery to try and pull away from him as best we can to avoid him getting a run into that first corner. It's working too. We've almost established about half a second over the Alpha to so enter turn number one here. We've gone a bit too late on the typically deep on the brakes. So we hit the grass there. Snowden could get full advantage to try and seize our position of P14. There he goes down towards turn three. He's sitting there right behind us waiting in the slingshot to try and make his move into the corner. He would need to wait. We're going to go way too deep there. I'm still struggling with the handling and of course the wet weather doesn't help things at all. The full wet weather. First one driving full wet on this game. Okay, so still getting to grips with it. So it takes full of to that and slides into P14 and Piastri might try and follow him through. We've gone a bit too wide there. We almost going to the grass again. We've put two wheels on the grass. The stakes galore here in Australia and Snowden is pulling away from us. He's already four seconds clear by the time we start lap 13 and again going way too deep into turn one. Still not getting to grips with the, uh, the breaking points on this circuit. Piastri Okay, closing in, of course, the, the, the braking is a lot earlier now, thanks to the weather, it's definitely helping our case at all. Running right up there with the wall and unable to steer in, and I've almost put it on the grass there. That allows Piastri to go charging on through into P15, we're down to P16 now. We've got our teammate Marcus Armstrong sitting right there behind us now. We're going to try and close on Piastri as best we can, try and stay with him. That might be a losing battle as it is. On to lot number 15 now, and coming into pit lane, and guys, I did actually make a change and put it on broadcast pit stop by accident because it changed the settings when you try other modes in the game. So into the pit lane now, looking at probably a slower stop here than usual given the fact we can't do the turn in in the same way. Down to P18 here and now making our way in to make a change onto another set of wet tyres 
And we've got a problem here on the back left tyre, and that's all we need. A pit stop mistake there for the first time. I've never seen a pit stop mistake on this game, at least in terms of my team, or in terms of any car I've driven on this game. Joe comes out there right behind us as we rejoin lap number 16 in P20 here, where the last, the last few cars come into the pit lane, I believe. We'll see who else comes in. On to lap number 18 here. We've got a few cars pitting for what looks like the intermediate tyres. We'll see De Vries, Hulkenberg, Sargent, Piastri. They're all in. Those four cars put back into P16, but those guys will be breathing down our neck in the last 10 laps of this race, and they know that close in. I could pit for wet for intermediate tyres, but we'd lose track position in that case, and I want to try and finish this part of the order as we can. There's really not much to fight for in that respect, but I still want to try and close down Armstrong. We have been doing that since our pit stop. It was about six seconds in front when we got it when we came out of the pits. It's down around about 2.3, but Piastri is going to start lap 21. He's got, he, he, okay, he's got us in front of him, and Hulkenberg behind him. Hulkenberg going for a move into that first corner. Going to be very, very close here between the two of them. We've gone onto the grass once again. Piastri could try and sidle around our outside here. We're going to try and cover him off as best we can, but he's already got the run. The home crowd on their feet for their hero as Piastri charges towards turn three. Going to break early here just to make sure we actually make the breaking zone this time and don't sacrifice another place to Hulkenberg. But Piastri is in front of us once more. And it's quite unfortunate. We're really struggling here in on these wet other tyres, and Hulkenberg could try and take full advantage of that as well as you go through. Gone wide once again, and we haven't lifted enough. And Hulkenberg might try and take advantage. He's going to try and go around the outside. That's Cover him off only just there, avoiding making contact. He took a face of action at the last possible second, but I dare say he might try and get around us here. We've gone wide, going through the right hand, and Hulkenberg takes full advantage of that and moves up into P17, putting us down yet another place here. And only De Vries and Sargent are behind us. Going to try and close back in Hulkenberg, but he's blocking us off. He's covering us very nicely here. We look to the inside, going to the chain as best we can. Into the corner we come. Got over the curbs there. We almost hit him. We've managed to get away with it though, and back into P17. We've gone wide though, off onto the gravel. Hulkenberg shot back into the max of an impact. On to lap number 22 of this race. Hulkenberg now on the right hand side. He's got to run us this time into turn one. We're going to break a little bit earlier than he does going through turn one. Give him the space. Stay in front of him for the moment. He's got Sergeant and De Vries right behind us. We could lose these places all at once here. And that would probably be the end of our Grand Prix in terms of the action that would come our way. Verstappen, probably under threat to Sorry, not Verstappen. I think that's Sergio Perez lead now. Under, under threat to try and relax us here. We've gone way wide once again off onto the curb. Hulkenberg takes advantage. Whilst one place lost. And look, he's trying to avoid losing the other two to Sergeant. And the Vries who are flying on this intermediate. Sargent's got the fastest lap of the race. We've gone wide there and off into the grass. Sargent takes full advantage. Charges through for P18. And the Vries, the last car left behind us to really bring about the end of any chance of us making any more places in this Grand Prix. The wet weather tyres really struggling here. And they're running very low in terms of tyre wear as well. So going on to towards the end of lap number 20, 22 now. The Vries all over us. Over the curb we go. And we've gone way too wide this time off in the gravel. And the Vries takes full advantage and sweeps through. Mistake after mistake after mistake. It's really costing us here. So it's unfortunate, but P20 is the really best we can do here. Joe's on the intermediate tyres, but I don't think he'll catch us. And he went up to retire in midway through lap 28. So he's out of the Grand Prix. And so with the last running car on track, Perez charges towards the line here. You can see just how much he's caught us here. A much faster Red Bull. Yeah, there's our car crossing the line to start the final lap as Perez comes across the finish line to win for the first time this season. Three winners from three races and put in pay to his teammate Verstappen retiring from the Grand Prix as Tim Mercedes cars come through to take second and third Hamilton in second and Russell running the podium look how worn our wet tyres are here we've done about half the race on them we've really struggled and as a result you see how slowly I was coming towards the finish line here and P20 last of the running cars disappointing all around let's try and bounce back from this but I definitely don't want to do any more wet races for a while especially not races in this level and of weather at least time to get to learn the game we'll a little bit more so frustrating day P20 Armstrong beats us once again and we've got some serious work still I thought we were getting there but perhaps there's still a bit more to do down the line frustrating all around it was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Red Bull today so Natalie what do you think helped them deliver this result? I want to know if that was as easy as it looked. An absolute masterclass today. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. So Sergio Perez picked up his first win of the season and Red Bull's second of the campaign. Receiving the trophy there, the winner of the Australian Grand Prix, Hamilton and Russell rounding off the podium for Mercedes. Again, frustrating day for us, P19, P20, and not really what we want to be right now. We'll make improvements and we'll come back stronger in the next race. It's Azerbaijan next time out, so we've got the sprint race as well, so looking forward to that. 
and there go the car, there go the guys celebrating on the podium. One day we'll join them, but it's not to be today. Definitely not to be today. We'll move into the results. Changed. After an incredible performance, Lewis Hamilton secures the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Max Verstappen seemed to just effortlessly weave through the other drivers today without a care in the world. He was definitely my driver of choice. It's time to check out the constructors' standings. No change in the top spot then, but with today's points, their hold on that lead is getting weaker. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. So take a look now at your final results of this Australian Grand Prix. Sergio Perez wins the race, Hamilton comes in second, Russell in third, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc take fourth and fifth, Alonso in sixth, Lance Stroll seventh, Lando Norris eighth, Pierre Gasly ninth, and Piastri, after making an intermediate tyre stop, swipes tenth and the fastest lap. Fantastic stuff from him. McLaren having a great season to start things off. We come on P19 for Armstrong and P20 for us. Of course, Guan Yu, Zhou, and Max Verstappen both retire from the race here. Unfortunately for Verstappen, that's two retirements in a row, a two from three. I don't help him in the Drivers' Championship at all. He currently sits there in sixth place, 22 points off Lewis Hamilton. But he's got Leclerc and Sainz breathing down his neck here, just two and four points off. And Russell, as of right now, not too far behind either. Perez closing in with the win today. And in terms of Constructors' Championship, Ferrari still lead by three points over Mercedes. Red Bull down in third, thanks to those two Verstappen retirements. And still no points for us. Haas. Williams and Alfateri also yet to score. So those will be our main competitors right now. But guys, that is the end of this video as we get the team acclaim going through and we'll reach acclaim level six for the team. So a success in that respect. But regardless, you guys, that is the end of this, this race and this video. I do hope you did enjoy it despite the disappointing result. If you did, make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed for more future F1 23 content as we continue on with this and breaking point. We'll break into F1 world as well. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the rest of the day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a good one, guys, and goodbye.